your last interview on Mogadishu and what happened in Somalia. What hurts me the most about the trash bags. Talking to one of the spouses whose body parts were in that trash bag. And she can't use trash bags. This past weekend, we all reacted with anger and horror as an armed Somali gang desecrated the bodies of our American soldiers and displayed a captured American pilot. I remember getting nervous, but still like, uh, we're gonna be home for dinner, right? You know, just joking around. And then another RPG, and I remember looking up and seeing it hit the helicopter, the tail of the helicopter. You saw it hit. Yeah, and it just started auto-rotating, I'm like, oh man, no, 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 you know? These tragic events raise hard questions about our effort in Somalia. At one point, I heard this clicking and dragging, clicking and dragging, and I'm like, you gotta be sure. And I'm like, I hear something. And I look down and there's a Somalian on his hands and knees with an AK in front of him, crawling up to my window. The uh, taking of a prisoner or a hostage that is reported in Mogadishu, Somalia. Major David Stockwell, a spokesman with the UN forces there, joins us now on the line. What we saw yesterday afternoon and, and all night was uh, an engagement with the IDED militia that lasted 15 to 16 hours. I'm ready to go back out. Just ready to go back out. Found out Gary, Randy, pilots were missing, you know, Durant was missing. All we could do was wait. They wouldn't let us go back out. They were just trying to gen up intel and figure out what was going on. They were flying signature flights still. They were flying around broadcasting, you know, we won't forget. We won't stop looking for you. Because I don't get this detail, typically, and it still hurts, you know? Yeah. It's funny, people say, well, tell me about Somalia, or let's talk about Somalia, and I instantly, I feel it, you know? Is there anything that could have been done after that operation that could have improved your, your mental state for the rest of your career? What do you guys do? Like, what, what's your mission set? And he said, to, to free the oppressed. He's like, yeah, we build nations. We go in and we help the oppressed, we free them. That's our job. And I said, nobody's ever put it that way to me. You always hear fight for freedom, but no, no one had ever put it that way. We're the humanitarians going in, trying to stop the bad guys to build the new so that the good guys in that community can thrive. You know, when you have bullet holes in your clothes, it's a lot of luck. Tom, how many teammates did you lose? We lost Grizz Martin, who was on our team. He was driving our vehicle, our uh, Humvee, that we had, we had up-armored with plywood and sandbags. And an RPG went right through the wheel well where we couldn't armor the rear one and hit him on his right hip as the driver and detonated his 45, which went off, and then melted his 45 and injured him so bad that he died while they tried to save him. And I could keep going with suicides. Well, you know, 
that there are 22 veterans a day that take their lives. The thing that strikes me the most is we never got to bury anyone. We never got to say goodbye because it all happened before we got home. And the only person that I didn't realize had done so much was Matt Ryerson. He came out for us four or five times at least.